Thank you, Karthik, for the introduction. Uh, good evening, everyone. We have around 72 attendees for today's webinar on stress analysis on piping system. Before getting into the content, we would like to have a feel of the audience. Please answer the questions in the poll so that we can understand your expectations and deliver the webinar accordingly. How deep you know the subject of discussion today, stress analysis on piping system? Uh, either you are a beginner or you have the basics. If you are a beginner, we will cover the basics, otherwise we will skip the basics. Please answer this question. Thank you very much. The next question, which of the best following your current job role? Are you representing a contractor, a EPC contractor, a MEP contractor or main contractor? Are you representing an engineering firm? Or design firm or consulting firm or PMC or you are representing a client or you are a student or fresh graduate looking for a job. Please answer this question. Thank you very much for answering the questions. So we have um, most of the attendees wants the basics to be covered and uh, most of them are working with EPC contractor. So with this outcome we are getting into the webinar now. We have three main learning objectives for the webinar today. At the end of this webinar, you will have understanding of number one, why and when stress analysis is required in a piping system. That is when you have to do a stress analysis in the piping system and when you can exclude stress analysis in piping system. So this, this is the first objective. And number two, you will understand what are the various loads and stresses acting on a piping system. And finally, you'll understand the governing codes associated with stress analysis of piping system. Piping network can be compared to blood circulation system in humans. Blood circulation system circulates the working fluid that is blood to all organs and keeps it functional. Similarly, piping network circulates the working fluid to all components of the plant and keep the functionality of the plant. Piping network is invariably a part of many essential infrastructures starting from water supply system, drainage system, chill water system, district cooling system, district heating system, power plants, oil and gas industries, process plants and many other systems. So piping system is invariably a part of many essential infrastructures used in our day to day life. These piping networks are exposed to various loads such as pressure, thermal loads associated with temperature difference, wind, seismic loads, etc. Stress analysis in piping system is essential to ensure number one, structural integrity of the piping system, number two, operational integrity of the piping system, and number three, to ensure optimum design of the piping system. Let us discuss in brief one by one. In terms of structural integrity, stress analysis should be done to ensure the piping system is safe against all the loads it is exposed to during the plant life cycle. And to ensure the stress loads and sagging or displacement is within the code limit. We'll discuss about various types of loads and codes associated with stress analysis in later slides. Next comes operational integrity. Before getting into operational integrity, let us understand the term nozzle load. Piping system consists of many components such as pipes, pipe fittings and equipment like pumps, heat exchangers, boilers, compressors, etc. Equipment nozzle connects the piping system and the entry or exit of the equipment. It is essential to ensure that the load and the stress on the nozzle is within the limit. Excess load or stress in nozzle will result in leakage of the working fluid. Next comes optimal design. While we ensure the safety of the piping network, we should also optimize the cost of the piping system. Stress analysis will help us to avoid unnecessary supports and flexibility in the piping system. To summarize, 
stress analysis is required to ensure number one structural integrity number two operational integrity and number three optimal design so far we discussed why stress analysis required that is what is the importance of stress analysis now we will discuss when stress analysis is required in many cases stress analysis is required in the project specification here is an abstract from a specification the specification states that the pre-insulated pipe manufacturer or supplier should do a stress analysis and advise on appropriate support system for the insulation jacket here is another specification which requires complete engineered stress analysis for main chilled water distribution network it also requires the stress analysis report should include all required thrust blocks restraints and expansion loops within the piping system here we have another project specification which requires stress analysis and surge analysis we will discuss surge analysis in different webinar so in many cases the project specification requires the epc contractor to perform stress analysis and advise on necessary supports and expansion loops in the piping system it is very much evident that you have to do stress analysis if it is specified in the project specifications so what to do if the specification does not talk about stress analysis as a general engineering practice stress analysis is required for piping system with pipe sizes exceeding 4 inches of diameter so if you have small network with the pipe sizes less than 4 inches stress analysis may be excluded however if the piping system is connected to rotating equipment like pump it is essential to perform stress analysis if you have to comply with piping codes then stress analysis may be required asme b31.1 is the commonly used code for chilled water system asme b31.1 does not tell explicitly that you should perform stress analysis for the piping system but it tells that the sagging in the piping system should not exceed 2.5 mm and the maximum allowable stress should not exceed the values specified in this table so in order to verify that the stress and sagging is within the limit you have to perform stress analysis so to answer the question when stress analysis is required number one it is required if it is explicitly mentioned in the project specification number two as general engineering practice if your pipe sizes exceed four inches of diameter and if it is connected to a rotating equipment like pump then stress analysis is required stress analysis is required to ensure the nozzle load is within the limit and number three if you are to comply with piping codes then a commonly used piping code is asme b31.1 which specifies the displacement or sagging limit as 2.5 mm and it specifies the allowable uh, uh, maximum allowable stresses in the piping network so you have to do stress analysis to ensure that the stress and the displacement or sagging is within the allowable limit we have now completed the first learning objective why and when stress analysis is required in a piping network to understand the next two topics we'll get into a project case study the project is secondary circuit of a chilled water system the piping system connects eight chilled water pumps to AHUs and then AHUs to the pumps again the pipe dia varies from 200 mm to 800 mm the pipe material is a53 grade b carbon steel the pipe the pipe thickness varies based on schedule 40 for pipe sizes 12 inches or lesser dia and schedule standard for pipe diameters more than 12 inches the working fluid is water which has a density of 1000 kg per cubic meter 
the operational pressure is 7.5 bar but the but the pipe network has to be tested at 10 bar during commissioning so hydro test pressure is 10 bar the working fluid is at a temperature of 6 degrees celsius in the supply side and 14 degrees celsius in the return side the outdoor ambient temperature can go up to 52 degrees celsius the pipe has 50 mm insulation the insulation density is 48 kg per cubic meter this is the 3d model of the piping network modeled in a software called as CSER 2 CSER 2 is the most popular software used for stress analysis in piping system now let us look at the loads acting on the piping network the first type of load is the dead weight dead weight of the pipes fittings valves the working fluid that is water insulation cladding etc the weight will be acting towards the gravity the next load is pressure pressure of the water in the piping system the pressure of water will act in all the directions in all the directions of the piping system and then comes the thermal load the minimum temperature in the piping system is 6 degrees celsius and the maximum ambient temperature can go up to 53 degrees celsius this temperature difference can result in contraction on the cold side and expansion on the hot side this further results in thermal stresses bending movement and torsion in the piping system there can be other occasional loads such as wind seismic effects water hammer etc in this webinar we will limit our discussion to sustained load and thermal load when it comes to weight of the pipe actually we have to use the term mass but in practice we use the term weight the correct term is mass uh, so when it comes to uh, weight of the pipe we can refer to the data sheet of the pipe to estimate the load associated with weight the maximum pipe dia is 800 mm and its corresponding weight with water is around 683 kg per meter we can approximate to 700 kg per meter including insulation and cladding the equivalent load can be obtained by multiplying acceleration due to gravity g which comes to around 7000 newton per meter in other terms 7 kilo newton per meter the weight may cause sagging or deflection in the pipe which in turn causes compressive stress on one side of the pipe and tensile stress on the other side of the pipe next comes pressure pressure acts in all directions all directions generally means x y and z direction but in piping system we deal with cylindrical coordinates in cylindrical coordinates the directions are considered to be radial axial or longitudinal direction and circumferential or tangential directions so in this system we have 7 bar as operating pressure and 10 bar as hydro test pressure let us consider the worst case scenario for the calculations hence 10 bar is acting in the radial direction axial direction or longitudinal direction and tangential or circumferential direction the pipe is exposed to radial pressure of 10 bar from inside and atmospheric pressure from the other side so the pipe tends to deform the pipe material will resist the deformation which results in radial stress the maximum possible radial pressure is equal to the internal pressure in our case it is 10 bar or 1 mega pascal next comes the pressure in axial direction or longitudinal direction so the pressure of 10 bar acts in longitudinal direction or axial direction and tends to deform the pipe in the same direction the pipe material will resist the deformation which results in axial stress the axial stress can be calculated by the formula p d by 40 where p is the internal pressure in the pipe d is the external diameter and t is the thickness of the pipe 
request you to quickly calculate the axial stress associated uh, with the pressure and give your answers in the comment box. For ease of calculation, let's approximate the diameter as 800 mm and thickness as 10 mm. Uh, yes, you can uh, uh, now give the answers in the comment box. Yes, many of you have given the uh, right answers. It is 20 megapascal. And finally comes circumferential pressure. So the pressure of 10 bar acts in circumferential direction and tends to deform the pipe material. The pipe material shall resist the deformation which results in circumferential stress or it is also called as hoop stress. Hoop stress is commonly used in the industry. So please uh, make a note of this term hoop stress. The hoop stress can be calculated by the formula P D by 2T where again similar to the uh, previous calculation P is the in internal pressure which is 10 bar D is the uh, outdoor uh, outside diameter uh, we can approximate to 800 mm for the ease of calculation and uh, T is the thickness we can approximate to 10 mm for the ease of calculation please complete the calculation yes many of you have uh, given the uh, right answers uh, the uh, uh, the hoop stress is equal to 40 megapascal. Let us now go back and compare the numbers of radial stress, axial stress and hoop stress associated with pressure. So radial stress is 1 megapascal, the axial stress is 20 megapascal and hoop stress is 40 megapascal. So radial stress is much much lesser compared to axial stress. Or hoop stress and it can be ignored and the relation between hoop stress and axial stress hoop stress is twice as axial stress so for the calculations we have to focus on hoop stress if the hoop stress is within the allowable limit then the design is safe deflection or sagging of the pipe shall cause bending movement and there can be stress associated uh, stress developed because of uh, bending movement so this so the stress associated with bending moment can be calculated by mb by z where mb is the bending moment and z is the section modulus the deflection or displacement or sagging or thermal expansion caused in one segment of pipe can cause bending moment and torsion in other segments in this case if the vertical pipe is displaced it causes bending movement in the immediate horizontal pipe and torsion in the next segment of pipe. The stress associated with torsion can be calculated uh, as Mt by 2z where uh, Mt is the torsional moment and z is the section modulus. To summarize, these are the loads and stresses acting in the piping network. The first one is the radial stress uh, associated with pressure. Number two, hoop stress or tangential stress or circumferential stress again associated with pressure. And there are three uh, components to axial stress. One associated with pressure. Next associated with any external axial forces. And third associated with uh, the bending movements. So that is uh, related to axial stresses. And finally we have torsion stresses. So uh, out of these stresses, uh, the pressure related stresses are independent of the pipe routing. So uh, irrespective of the site insulation and routing, we can calculate the radial stress, axial stress and hoop stress associated with the pressure. So this can be calculated in the design case. So the maximum of these stresses should be the uh, hoop stresses, we discussed it before. And in our case, the maximum uh, hoop stress that is uh, uh, calculated as 40 megapascal. So we have to ensure this 40 uh, megapascal is within the allowable limit for the pipe material. So far we discussed about various loads and stresses acting on the piping network. So once the loads and stresses are evaluated and the stresses are calculated using the uh, software, then the next step is to ensure that these stresses are within allowable limit. So this part is called as compliance check. 
So uh, the software generally compared the maximum stress developed in the piping network to the code allowable limit and it reports whether the stresses and the deflections are within the limit or not. Please recall the objectives of stress analysis we discussed in the beginning. We need to ensure number one sagging or displacement is within code limit. Number two the stresses are within the code allowable limit and number three the nozzle loads are within code allowable limit. So to find out whether if these three parameters are within the code allowable limit first we have to finalize which code we are going to follow. ASME B31.1 power piping is the code generally used for chilled water piping. Here is a list of relevant codes associated with piping. You may have a look at it. Uh, some of the codes like ASME B31.9, ASME B31.3 may appear relevant but it is not. To understand this, let us have a look at the scope of these codes in the next slide. This piping network is connected to pumps. So API 610 is the uh, is, uh, appropriate code to check the nozzle loads. That is very much uh, relevant and uh, obvious. So no further discussion on this. Take some time to read the scope of the codes ASME B31.1, ASME B31.3 and ASME B31.9. So if you read uh, thoroughly, uh, you can uh, very well uh, find that ASME B31.1 is the most relevant code for uh, chill water system, district cooling and uh, uh, heating systems. So that is what it is generally followed in the industry as well. So in order to comply with uh, ASME B31.1, the maximum displacement should not exceed 2.5 mm. The maximum allowable stress is tabulated uh, for different temperatures and pipe material. Uh, here is a snapshot from the, from the code. In our case, the temperature is less than 100 degree Fahrenheit and the pipe material is A53 grade B. So the corresponding maximum allowable stress is 17.1 kpsi, which is equivalent to 117 megapascal. If you do the conversion factor from uh, KPCI to, uh, to uh, megapascal, then it can be converted to 117 megapascal. And uh, based on our calculation uh, uh, on pressure, diameter and thickness, the hoop stress, the maximum hoop stress is 40 megapascal. So uh, if you look at only the pressure, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the design is safe. But again, we have to evaluate the bending movements and torsional uh, stress based on the stress analysis report. For uh, nozzle load limits, here is an extract from APA 610 which provides allowable loads for different uh, sites of the nozzle in the pump and for different uh, diameters. So the software will evaluate the stresses and compare with APA 610 values. Stress analysis is done on this particular piping network using CSA2 software which is popularly used in the industry. And we have observed failures in few locations uh, which is shown in the cloud. Here is an enlarged part of the areas of the failure. The stress in the elbow is 4.4% higher than the allowable stress. The failure is due to thermal expansion and contraction associated with the temperature difference. We have recommended expansion loops to allow flexibility in those locations and hence to keep the stresses within code allowable limit. Here is the revised stress analysis report after incorporating the recommendations. Uh, the stresses are very well within the allowable limit after incorporating the recommendations. You will not find any red zones in the, in the report. Here are some pictures showing failures in the piping system. So it is very much essential to do a stress analysis before we go for site installation. Before we conclude, let me give a brief about Conserve Solutions. Conserve Solutions is a very young but emerging engineering company. Uh, we are around 350 people plus at the moment. Uh, we started in April 2016 in Doha, Qatar with only three people. Uh, by, by now, uh, by the grace of Almighty, we are 350 people plus. We are located in um, Qatar, UAE, 
சென்னை அண்ட் திருச்சி இன் இண்டியா கனடா சிங்கப்பூர் சவுதி அரேபியா அண்ட் வி ஹாவ் அ அசோசியேட் இன் யூகே அவர் சர்வீசஸ் கேன் பி ப்ராட்லி கிளாஸ்ஃபைட் இன் டு எம்இபி ஸ்ட்ரக்சுரல் சிமுலேஷன் அனாலிசிஸ் அண்ட் சஸ்டனபிலிட்டி வி சர்வ் கஸ்டமர்ஸ் இன் ஏஇசி இண்டஸ்ட்ரி தட் இஸ் ஆர்கிடெக்சர் இன்ஜினியரிங் கன்ஸ்ட்ரக்ஷன் இன்ஃப்ராஸ்ட்ரக்சர் ஆயில் அண்ட் கேஸ் அண்ட் எனர்ஜி அண்ட் யூட்டிலிட்டிஸ் ஹியர் இஸ் த டீட்டெயில் லிஸ்ட் ஆஃப் சர்வீசஸ் வி ஆஃபர் யூ கேன் கோ த்ரூ இட் இஃப் இட் இஸ் ஆஃப் இன்ட்ரெஸ்ட் டு யூ வி ஆல்சோ ப்ரொவைட் ட்ரைனிங் ஆஃப் ஆல் த சர்வீசஸ் வி ப்ரொவைட் அண்ட் வி ப்ரொவைட் செகண்ட் மந்த் சர்வீசஸ் இஃப் எனி கம்பெனிஸ் ரெக்வயர் பீப்புள் வி ப்ரொவைட் பீப்புள் ஆன் செகண்ட் மந்த் சர்வீசஸ் on short term or long term basis before we conclude i would like to summarize our discussion in next three slides we started the discussion with why stress analysis is required in piping system stress analysis is required in piping system to ensure safe and optimized design the objective of stress analysis is number 1 to ensure a sagging is within code allowable limit number 2 the stresses induced in the piping system is within the code allowable limit and number 3 the nozzle loads are within the code allowable limit next we discussed about when pipe stress analysis is required so we discussed that in many projects it is explicitly specified to do stress analysis so it is in the specifications so the project has to do stress analysis and number 2 many projects has to comply with asme piping codes so if your project specifies that uh, you have to comply with asme piping codes then uh, you have to demonstrate that uh, the stresses induced and the sagging uh, in the system are within the uh, code allowable limit that is number 2 and as a general engineering practice uh, if the pipe dia exceeds 200 mm and or uh, if the pipe is connected to uh, any rotating equipment or uh, any critical equipments then stress analysis required for the piping system the next topic we discussed is about various loads and stresses in the piping system so let's uh, talk about loads first so we have two types of loads in uh, the piping network one is sustained load sustained load acts throughout the life of the of the uh, plant and occasional loads acts rarely right so sustained loads include dead weight pressure temperature difference etc the loads which are acting regularly on the on the plant occasional loads like uh, seismic loads that is earthquake wind uh, water hammer uh, this happens rarely when you uh, stop when you for example when a valve is suddenly closed water hammer may may appear and earthquake is really a rare event so in such cases occasional loads uh, the plant may be exposed to occasional loads so now these uh, loads induce various stresses in the uh, in the uh, piping system pressure is the most important component here so uh, in this uh, case study we we saw a pressure of uh, 7 bar the operating pressure of 7 bar and 10 bar so uh, it is one of the uh, important component which induce stress so pressure induce stress in all directions all directions in the sense radial uh, axial and uh, circumferential that is called as hoop stress so radial stress uh, is equal to the internal pressure so generally it is ignored it is very less compared to uh, the other stresses axial stress is given by pd by 4t and hoop stress is given by pd by 2t so hoop stress is a maximum stress that is induced because of stress so in the design stage what you have to do is you have to calculate the hoop stress and ensure it is within the code allowable limit the pressure related stresses are not associated with the uh, with the pipe routing or site in- installation it is based on the design criteria which is the pressure so uh, it can be very well calculated in the design and we have to ensure in the design stage that uh, it is very well within the limit next comes uh, the stresses associated with uh, you know bending movement uh, external forces and uh, torsional uh, stress so these stresses depend on the pipe routing and the site installation condition so this has to be uh, calculated or uh, simulated using stress analysis software and then we have to check whether the stresses induced are within the code allowable limit 
finally we discussed about various codes associated with um, uh, with typing so we discussed about asme uh, 31.1 31.3 and 31.9 uh, and we concluded why asme 31.1 is the most relevant um, uh, code that has to be referred for chill water system or hot water system even though the code is named as power piping asme b31.1 is named as uh, power piping uh, it is commonly used for um, um, chilled water system and uh, hot water system and then uh, uh, in the case study we uh, uh, the pipe the pipe network is connected to uh, a pump a centrifugal pump in which case we have to uh, refer to ap610 uh, which gives the uh, limits for the nozzle loads with this uh, we are coming to the conclusion of the webinar if you have any questions please type them in the comment section i'll be very happy to answer them